I started having these visits. I've seen some other races, which I'll show you, but the initial visits were from those people. They weren't gray, they were chalk white, but they had the phenotype. The head was really oblong, more like this, a little more this out this way, but they were there and they didn't talk much. They would talk, they would show me pictures in my head. The only people who really spoke to me were, was this, where, where is he, the reptilian? But his words were, don't be afraid. It's easy to, when someone looks like that to say, don't be afraid. Interesting in the Bible stories that sometimes the angels are always saying, don't be afraid. Even that brother, the only reason I say brother is because, well, he is a brother, he's just from another place. But um, his voice was like a man's voice. And, and it was in my head, it was telepathy. His lips didn't move, I'm talking about the reptilian. His lips didn't move. Welcome back to another episode of the Expanded Knowledge Podcast. We've got a special treat for you today. We have Reverend Michael Carter, and I'm going to let Reverend Carter introduce himself and his background, but um, I met Michael at the Danbury UFO Conference just a few days ago and uh, found his insights, his background, and his perspective on the UFO, ET phenomenon, and just everything else and how it all connects, ancient history, all of it. Uh, I could tell that Michael's very well read and has been studying this topic for a long time. So it's a real privilege to have him here today. I think he has a really unique perspective. Um, and yeah, Michael, so would you mind just kind of introducing yourself and kind of telling us, you know, what your what would you say is your expertise? What would you say has been kind of like your life's work? Sure. First of all, uh, Brother Anthony, thanks for having me on. I was looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Reverend Michael Carter. Um, I am currently serving a Unitarian Universalist congregation here in North Carolina. Uh, I graduated from Union Theological Seminary in New York. I attended um, uh, the College of New Rochelle, graduated cum laude for my undergraduate studies. I was raised... Uh, in the, the uh, African-American Baptist tradition. Um, I, I'm no longer in that tradition, but those are my roots. And who was it? Malcolm X said, you can't hate the roots without hating the tree. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. And I'm a father. Um, I, was, I served um, a few hospitals in New York City as a chaplain. So I have mm -hmm. some, uh, a hospital chaplain. And uh, I have a daughter. And um, what else can I tell you? Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm d trying to do what we all do, pay the bills, be a, be, be a mensch, be a good person, mm. and, and try to get through these, uh, these trying times. Mm. And uh, I'm an optimist uh, at heart, and I'm a, but I'm a pragmatist as well. So I think that, that kind of sums me up. You know, I've, my, my life's mission is to serve. I, I do energy healing work. I, I'm, uh, I had a career in, the, in a background in the theater, professional theater in New York. Um, I, do, I teach Reiki um, and I do pastoral counseling as part of my ministry, as well as serving a 160 member congregation. And um, that's, that's probably it for now. <laughs> Cool. What is exactly is universalist? Oh, Unitarian um, Universalist. Or, yeah. Great question. We started out as part of the Protestant Reformation, but we kind of zigged where everyone else zagged. Unitarianism came in from Transylvania, um, and Unitarians believed in uh, religious freedom where you could question the Bible, but also believe that God is one. Thus, the uni, Unitarian. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do not, we're not Trinitarians. We find no scriptural basis for it. Universalism, more of a blue collar, if, if I can use those words, part of our denomination, um, believe that God is love. And so everybody is saved. Now, I'm using the language they used back then. We've kind of broadened all that. It may sound archaic to someone, but we believe that God is love. And so God does not barbecue people in eternity or in hell because you disagree or you have a different religious belief. 
came together in 1961. Um, here, uh, uni universalism came here. A guy named John Murray brought universalism here um, from England. So we've been here for a while. The first, uh, the first ordained female minister in United States, Olympia Brown, was a universalist minister. Uh, oh. So um, Emerson was Unitarian. A lot of founding fathers were. And basically that was it, that you could bring reason to the scriptures. You just didn't believe stuff. Thomas Jefferson, for instance, claimed to be a Unitarian, um, but he didn't believe in the miracles of the Bible. So he took, uh, you know, there's something called the Jefferson Bible. He took all the miracles out. But we believe in that kind of freedom. When I go to church on Sunday, and we, some of our churches are churches, congregations, society, fellowships. We have a very eclectic. I could be, there could be witches, Wiccans there with Christians, with Jewish people there. So it's an interesting mix. Mm -hmm. um, and some of our congregations are more atheistic or humanistic. We don't have a creed. I can hear people saying, well, how can you have a church if you don't? But we don't have a creed. We have eight principles, mm -hmm. um, which we follow. Um, uh, intellectual freedom is one of them. That truth comes in various shapes, sizes, and colors. So it's not only one religion. Uh, th those kind, you know, one way of looking at things. We believe in the democratic process. Those are some of the things. But people can look those up or Google them. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 not perfect. But it, it fits my needs. And I I found out I was probably a Unitarian Universalist before I even knew I was one, because I had never heard of them. But I believe that all the spiritual paths have a truth. And it's just different ways to the, you know, to the same goal. And, um, but that, you know, that's kind of rare these days. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, that, that sounds really good. I like that. Um, so I want to, I want to kind of give you space to share your your contact experiences and this question will probably kind of lead into that but um correct me if i'm wrong part of what makes you unique in your career is that you did basically a study for your master's thesis right on um, yeah on yeah ufos or aliens or yes i got my master's degree from union theological seminary in the year 2000 okay uh, I will always credit them because they could have said, you are not graduating from here writing that. And and, and to pause you for a second, it, I'm just asking because I don't know, yeah. in the in the world of um, theological academic institutions, to write something like that, that's would that be like very uncommon, very much like... Very, yes. Oh, okay. very uncommon at the or time. Or like um, suppressed or even... Yes, just, yes. Yeah, okay. Definitely, definitely. Okay. And I believe that that's, that's a great question. That's why you don't hear of many ministers talking about this because you could lose your job. Mm. If you were a professor, you could, there's still a taboo about talking about a populated universe, even with what our government is going through, you know, with the hearings and, and those kinds of things, it's still taboo to talk about it. So I, I, I kudos to them for even allowing it. Um, that was in the year 2000. I was talked into doing it, to writing the book, because I was very much closeted, if I could use that word, uh, mm -hmm. because I didn't want to, I almost lost my church gig because yeah. someone happened to turn on the television and saw me on ancient aliens and, said, oh, my God, my, my, my minister's talking about little green men. Right. And uh, it, it got a little dicey. They took me to the board of trustees, and the board of trustees said, no, he's not doing anything wrong. He's not forcing it down our throats. He may even be right, mm -hmm. but uh, we, we're not going to go as far as getting rid of him. But there's still that taboo. I was not, I did not believe in this at all. Uh, I, I never. I just started watching Star Trek maybe five years ago. Um, it's interesting. People say, uh, you know, people would ask me why I didn't believe in UFOs. This is when I was very, very young. And I would say because it's not in the Bible. But what a difference 20, 30 years makes. Because now I'm going around the country telling people that that's all, that's all in the Bible. <laughs> so, yeah. And... Um, 
you know, I, I stand on the shoulders of a lot of other people. Uh, Dr. The Reverend Dr. Barry Downing, retired Presbyterian minister, colleague of mine, um, wrote a book back in 1968 called uh, The Bible in Flying Saucers. He's not an experiencer, but he was he put it out there. Morris K. Jessup, not a clergy person, died in the 50s from mysterious of mysterious circumstances, mm -hmm. wrote a book about UFOs in the Bible. I happen to have the books in my library. Mm -hmm. um, Reverend Virginia Brazington from Asheville, North Carolina. So we had some female energy in the house, nice. wrote a book, a few other people. So when I, after I had my experiences, which do continue, um, I, I, I found these books or I was led to them, whichever way you want to look at it. And so I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and, and it gave me a boost because I was traumatized. Um, it, you know, the unexamined life is not worth living. The un unexamined faith is not worth having. So I had to rethink my ideas about what it meant to be a Christian, what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. I, you know, it just turned me inside out, which I'm glad it did. And so that's how I came to where I am now. Um, and, you know, I've written, you know, about five books on it. Uh, well, three books on it two, and two on other spiritual subjects. I have a book coming out in uh, around Christmas, but it's a book of sermons. And so um, I never, I never looked for this consciously. Uh, when I was starting to speak out on on this, Anthony, uh, the more the more I spoke out on it, and then people, you know, they ask you, well, "I need your bio." I need your resume. Um, and I started to see all the places I had been. And I said, oh, my God, this is like a job. This is like, this is like yeah. another job. And, you know, I don't, you know, you don't make a lot of money. It's not right. why I'm in it. But I think it's important to get the word out because I think it's about human growth potential. Mm. I think it's about our human origins and where we can go with this. That's what I that's what I think. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Um, how many, so how many years before you did your thesis, did you have your first experience? Oh, wow. I had my first conscious experience. I now realize I had experiences when I was younger, but I didn't have, I couldn't articulate it, but, um, and I had to go through hypnosis and that kind of thing. But in nine, uh, December 28th, 1989, I had my first um, experience when this this individual uh, was in my room. Now, uh, yeah. I'm saying he, it, it felt like a he, it could have been a, a female entity, or it could not, it could have been an android, I don't know. Yeah. He, he uh, didn't have this robe. I had someone make him a Buddha. Um, uh. But uh, he had on a tight-fitting uh Jumpsuit. I don't know if you're old enough to remember the show Lost in Space. Uh, maybe not. But anyway, uh, it was like Reynolds wrap. It was like tight fitting. He was about, he was four feet tall tops, maybe. Okay. Uh, large head like that. I mean, even more if you look at the profile. I got to say, I love the juxtaposition of the Buddha with the alien. I yes. honestly I don't think I'm sure there's some art out there like that. I've never seen it and it's such a nice twist on it cuz usually aliens yeah. are portrayed as like scary or like weird and no, it's like not nah, peaceful. Very wise. Like, <laughs> yeah, and uh and so they came December 28, 1989. I just got um back from seeing the pyramids in Chichen Itza and Tulum on the Yucatan. Um my, my, I was starting to shift a bit. I, 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 I went into that a little bit at the conference, but I was already on a, a path that was taking me away from Orthodox Christianity. So I was into metaphysics. I was into healing, uh, uh, you know, psychic phenomenon, those types of things. Can I and can so, I back you up for a second yeah, there? Yeah. What what started that? Like this new kind of shift or, okay. or an awakening, if you could call it. That. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you would, but. 
you know, I was I didn't let go of Orthodox Baptist Christianity easy. I was trying to put a round peg in a square hole, and I just couldn't anymore. I just couldn't. I couldn't theologically. Now, granted, the and philosophically, granted, you know, the music I loved in the African American church, and I loved that spirit. Um, uh, I, I love the style. I love the cuisine. I, I grew up with that. Mm. But um, uh, the theology was serious, us and them. It was serious. You don't deserve better. And if this if this Jewish brother didn't get beat up and uh, uh, treated like that from a loving God, uh, that you wouldn't even be here. That started not to make really sense intellectually. Okay. And I couldn't fake it. And I remember uh, teaching a youth group uh, on 81st Street between Columbus and the park. There was a Baptist church there. What was the minister's name? Reverend Edgerton or, oh, Reverend uh, Pastor e. East, Eastley. Wonderful man. And he, he, he had me teaching the youth. And uh, we weren't even talking about UFOs then. It wasn't mm-hmm. there. But just was a more liberal theology. It was more about love. And, and uh, he did not like that. And I just said, I can't fake this anymore. And I didn't know where to go. I was angry. Um, and then someone told me about the Unitarian Church. I never heard of it. And I went there. Now, I was, I was original. I was, I was ordained as an interfaith minister uh, in New York City. I went to a seminary called the New Seminary Interfaith Temple. It was found, it sounds like a joke, by a rabbi, a priest, and a, uh, a swami, uh, Reverend cool. Rabbi Gelberman, the late Rabbi Gelberman. Uh, founded it, and it was a two-year program. The first year was um, comparative religion. The second year was practicum. How do you do a service? How do you do a funeral? How do you do? But it was no de- degree program with it, so I had to finish up my undergraduate and get. Not unless I was going to start a, um, like Paul, start a, a congregation in my living room, which I wasn't going to do. And you needed credentialing. I mean, right. let's be real. I felt you did. Mm-hmm. I did. I felt I did. Um, and so that's how we got started. And But then I started having these uh, these visits. I, I've, I've seen some other races, which I'll show you, but the initial visits were from those people. They weren't gray. They were chalk white. But so they, they had weren't the gray, but they kind of looked like the They had the that gray, phenotype. It was chalk. Same size, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And the head, though. The head was really... Different shape uh, head, though, right? Yeah, yeah. More like this. A little more this out this way. But they were there. And they didn't talk much. They would talk. They would, they would show me pictures in my head. The only people who really spoke to me were, was this... Where, where is he? The reptilian. But his words were, don't be afraid. But that was down the line, Um, and it was easy for him to say because it's easy when someone looks like that to say, don't be afraid. Interesting in the Bible stories that sometimes the angels are always saying, don't be afraid. Yeah. Uh, You know, just chill. Um, So, and and even even that brother, and the only reason I say brother is because, well, he is a brother. He's just from another place. But um, his voice was like a man's voice. Wow. And, and it was in my head. It was telepathy. His lips didn't move. I'm talking about the reptilian. His lips so, didn't move. Okay. And so the first group that you had, the, the December Grace. 28th, and they they didn't communicate with words telepathically. It was just images? Not the first time. Okay. They came to me every six months, eight, well, actually every six, eight months, maybe a year. They came twice a month, every full and new moon, which I thought was interesting. Um, so they were coming twice a month and they would do things like, uh, they showed me a past life where there was me on my left side in an event that later happened. And on the right, they showed me as a monk with the bald head, like a Benedictine, that kind. Now they didn't say that's you in a past life, but I just intuited that. Okay. So I'm doing a new thing. It made sense because I was always into religion. Always. I knew from a a kid that I was going to be a a clergy person. Knew that. It was like I'd done this before. 
I'm mm-hmm. comfortable in a mosque, but I was in Jerusalem several years ago when I used to go to the mosque just to visit over on East 96th Street in New York and Manhattan. I mean, I just, it's just an ease I have. It felt right. comfortable. Right. Then one day um, uh, they came and they would paralyze me. And they always would come, except that first time, they would come when I was home alone. The first time they came when my girlfriend was there. But she couldn't wake up. It was real. She just wouldn't get up. Uh, Then they came and they showed me, um, okay, I I I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. And I was on my stomach. But I wasn't asleep. They're coming when I'm awake, all of them. So it's not like, well, maybe I was having... At night or during the day? uh, Always at night. Always around anywhere between one and four in the morning. Okay. But you're always awake. I wake up in the morning to this day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wake up in the morning to this day. I'm at the gym at 530 swimming, but it's only because I'm up. I have, it's like post-traumatic. I can't go past that. It takes very hard for me to sleep. If I'm sleeping until 536, I'm sleeping in. And I just found out to myself that, boy, you're up so early. It's, it's, it happens to be between those hours that I'm visited. Okay. And the trauma is I have a hard time uh, being home alone. Mm. Uh, like if my wife goes out of town or if my daughter's not here, we, you know, cause she, she's here a couple times a month. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's hard. Was there anything that verified for you that, cause I would imagine you, you know, or most people might try to rationally figure out what's going on at the early stage. Right. And as it continues, what verified for you that it wasn't like a dream or like schizophrenia or something like that? Well, only because I'm awake. That was number one. So I couldn't have been dreaming. But number two, when I went to, I went through hypnosis, the late Bud Hopkins uh, uh, regressed me as did the late Dr. Gene Mundy. And so the good news was that I wasn't crazy. Uh, the, I remember Gene Mundy saying, the good news is that you're not crazy. Okay. Uh, but you have to decide what the bad news is or if there is any bad news. Right. Because uh, she specialized. In, and I found them, well, I knew Bud later on uh, in New York. But Gene, I, I, I was so, I was a wreck. I wasn't sleeping at night. I, You know, I must have looked like, I, re- I remember going to the open center downtown on Spring Street. Mm-hmm. So I'm dating myself. I don't even think it's there anymore, maybe. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. And um, I went in there and I'm a, you know, I just read. Uh, and this guy, I, I bought all these books on UFO phenomena. And I went up to the counter and I felt like I was buying condoms for the first time. I wouldn't even look at the guy. He was a very bizarre looking man. He had dreadlocks before it was in style to have dreadlocks, but he was bald. And the dreadlocks just came out of the side of his head. It was uh-huh. it was very bizarre. Uh-huh. And I put the books up on the counter and I was, <laughs> and he, he, you know, he was ringing them up. He said, brother, you okay? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, man. He said, uh, you look like bleep. And I said, great, thanks. That's terrific. And he just, he laughed and he said, uh, he was looking at the titles. He said, is this a hobby or is this for real? And and I didn't answer. He said, okay, okay. Yeah, it's none of my business. And he gave, he wrote down a woman's name and a number and he handed it to me. He said, give her a call. It wow. may help you out. It was a support group for experiencers. Wow. The woman's name was Christine Morsiglio. Wow. Once in a while, I'll hear from her still. And um, I, that's how I got to the support group. And it was a good support group for me because there were people there who had this experiences, but they too, despite the trauma, mm-hmm. not sleeping, the, the paranoia, all of that, uh-huh. um, we still said, but something shifted in me for the better. Mm. Something maybe religious or spiritual. Because Bud's group, 
which we got together with once every six months or so. Mm-hmm. Their group was people who did not. They were, what are you crazy? Nothing good can come of this, you know. They had sperm, ovum taken, um, you know, rectal probes, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And the reason I wrote my my book the first time after those many years after was because I wanted people to see that there was a positive side to this, that that it wasn't just fear and horror and that these people, you know, we was we were painting people with what we do with each other. We were stereotyping people. And so that was the mode of motivation. Mm-hmm. And being a man of color in this lifetime, mm-hmm. um, because I do believe in reincarnation and other lives, it's I know what it's like. I'm not saying I'm the only person, but I know what it's like to feel alienated. I know what it's like to be marginalized. And that's what we were doing with some of these beings, you know? So there was part of that in there as well. Wow. Yeah, that that all makes sense. Um, So how long did these visits last for? Like how many years? They still occur. The last one I had with with someone in my room was um, 20... 19 and this was the person who came to my room this praying mantis person wow um in 2013 um i mean we can ask you can ask me well i had a healing which was difficult because i had to explain to the doctor and of course i didn't tell them the truth but mm-hmm. this guy this nordic looking person came to visit and he, he healed a blood clot that i had Hold on. Uh, and then this person just came and stood by my bed. I call him an Octurian or her. He's breaking a bit. He was blue. Wow. Um, so those are the people that I have seen. I've had encounters with other beings who I don't know whether they were like energy-based beings or whatever. And they weren't all warm and fuzzy. These folks seem to be neutral except the one who healed me. And um, the gray people, the last thing I had with the gray person was I do energy healing. I do Reiki. I was uh-huh. an anti-racism trainer uh, and I got President Clinton uh, uh, got in touch with me about the work I was doing. Very proud of that. Wow. Um, so anyway, I was in Boston because Unitarian, you know, that's Boston is UU country, believe it or not. And um, I was going to do a training and um these beings, they, they came, the gray people. Wow. And uh, what they showed me was, I was again, I was paralyzed. I don't know whether that's for them, because there are there's literature where some people have punched them in the face or hit them or whatever. Or oh, I don't know if it was just for me, but um, they showed me in my mind's eye, like an icon in my mind's eye, I'm wide awake, of... It's like an icon of a gray pointing, like, look, don't, don't look at this. Look. And there was a pair of hands in prayer with a lightning bolt. Wow. It, a red lightning bolt. They showed me that. Wow. And then and then I forced my eyes open and that's it. Then I went on and did my training the next day. They follow you, they know where you are. Wow. Because I was now, lost. Wow, yeah. Now just to clarify, when you say yes. gray. But th- is this the being that's slightly different than than this yeah, yeah, well known like gray? A, yeah, well, or, is, well, again, or do you think it's, it's the guy, same? It's them with the big head and the eyes. It's them, and the only reason I make that distinction because there are many species of grays. Right, I guess but that's the what I'm trying to get out. The you, same. Yeah. Okay, but this might have been. Do you do feel this is like was like it's sort of different? No, no, I, I figure they're like, from the same place. Okay, okay. And, and 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 it was and this was before icons and stuff. And it was an icon of you know the gray is you know like the icon on your phone pointing. And when I followed where it was pointing, there was a set of hands in prayer with a lightning bolt through it. Mm-hmm. I was already starting to do Reiki, um, but this kind of affirmed it. You're on the right path. It's you could call it faith healing, whatever you want to call it. And so I took that logo 
and I, I made a business card out of it. So my, 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 my business card has my name. It has, you know, energy healer, intuitive counselor, and it has the, the, the prayer hands with a lightning bolt. Wow. I like that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So did, did these beings ever like show you anything about the bigger scale of kind of the universe or the human they didn't worry no it was Anthony, more they didn't. i know a lot yeah. of people ask me that and i know it doesn't sound sexy but no what they what they did was they they showed me and they never showed me like saying this is what you must do mm-hmm. but they they affirmed me they you know because i was into healing and and that kind of thing but what they made me do was look at my fears and again, they didn't say, Michael, you need to look at your fears. But I started to get it that, well, these these people never did anything to hurt me. One time they did. Now we can talk about that. But I mm-hmm. think that was more of a mistake. But right. if anything, they, my spirituality was expedited. I mean, I, I, I was more vulnerable. I was more human. Uh, I was willing to to risk. I was willing to say, I'm afraid and I don't know. And um, not that I wasn't already on that path, because I believe you have to do the work, Uh but they were just there. And my energy just changed. People would just gather around me. Some people said, your voice has changed somehow. It's so much more calming. Um, It would be interesting. Uh, it, It happened again a couple weeks ago. I went to a pool. I swim in the morning at a YMCA. Mm-hmm. And I like to have my own private lane because uh, I'm an introvert. By I just like to be away from everybody. Uh-huh. And I got in this pool, right? My The lanes that my lanes, the lanes I like to swim in were taken. Uh-huh. So I had to swim in the center of the pool just for 45 minutes. Do you know no one got in there next to me? It was like I had uh-huh. a force field around me. No one got in that pool next to me. It was weird. Um, or usually it wow. goes the other way where I could be in a pool or I could be in a movie theater. I could be, and I could be by myself and there'll be all this space over here and people have to come over to where I am. They may not even know why, but they feel that energy. Right. You know, um, yeah. I had a woman call me a liar once. Oh, well, she was part joking. She was friendly. Oh, uh, she had something wrong with her leg. She walked with a cane. Her mm-hmm. and her, uh, we met online. Her and her husband came to my house. She came three times. I gave her the energy. She no longer used the cane. But a couple of weeks after that, she called me and she said, Michael, you're a effing liar. You should have told me. I said, what are you talking about? She said, I've been doing healing longer than you've been alive, young man. And I was like, okay, what? Your leg is okay, right? She said, yeah. She said, but that's not, that's not Reiki. That's not Reiki. She said, I know Reiki. She said, that's some energy from those people. That's some energy from those friends of yours. Uh And, and you know, so we kind of chuckled. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's once you've been around them, all that changes. Your energy changes, your insight changes. And that's what it is for me, whether you're an experience or not. Once you get it, that we live in a populated universe, that there's all kinds of ET or not just ET. There's some people can, that don't even need ships to get around in. Mm. Um, your, your whole concept of God, of reality, it has to change. It has yeah. to. And yeah. so that's what happened with me. Yeah. I had to reinvent myself. Seminary did that for me, too, because seminary, good seminaries, was about challenging what you believe. Mm. Now, I know some people who went to union with me and they said, they're not going to take away my Jesus. They're not going to take away my faith. I'm going to just regurgitate to these professors what I need to get my my degree. And then I'm going on with my ministry. I thought that was a waste of time. You're paying all this money, not that you got a full ride. Why not learn? Why not wrestle? It was the, most, it was the best three years of my life, my adult life, because I was going through this at once. What do you believe? And they were visiting me and um, you know, my personal relationships. And I was living in New York City, huh. you know. So so, so there you have it. There you have it. 
I can tell you about the healing, but I'll shut up and let you ask me some questions. <laughs> and we can always get to that. That I had is, a healing from them. Yeah, that was actually one of my questions I jotted down from your presentation at the UFO conference. But I think what I wanted to say before that is, while it's on my mind, is I think it seems to me that you have a unique perspective and an important one in this whole field because most now with the abduction thing that hasn't drawn most of my personal research. Um, I, I, I spend more time on other areas of the whole bigger picture. Yeah. Um, but the abduction thing is important and the, and the, you know, the contact thing, of course, I guess I just haven't like dove so much into that, but even with that, most of what I've, what I hear is it's mostly malevolent except for, you know, there, there were the, um, the Adamski and then all of that, that was positive, right? Yeah, I am Billy Meyer and yeah. Right. Which I, I also yeah. had wanted to ask you more about that. But my point is that you, you're saying it was a positive experience, which is probably not, not the norm. And you're, and even with, you know, what really jumped out at me at the conference was, and what you're sharing now is the reptilian visit because the reptilians are generally seen as the, the bad ones, the evil ones. But I think it's important that we we look at this in a full context, like we're human beings, right? There are amazing, kind, loving, compassionate human beings. And there's mm-hmm. human beings that would, that have done horrible things and still do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I understand that it seems there's a lot of people giving testimony that, that this reptilian group is behind has been behind certain things and uh you know have this sort of dark basis but in your experience you felt that this being was positive right and and i don't know if you have any comment on that well let me be clear with that my my experiences with the gray people and the nordic people were 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 were, um positive I'm, i'm talking about the whole shebang it's like if i go to europe and I meet Africans, I meet Germans. I mean, the whole experience meeting those different people uh-huh. was, was, I grew from that. Right. The reptilian didn't do anything more. They came twice, but say, don't be afraid, touched me and looked at me and then walked out. But, 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 wow. but, you know, but that, you know, outside of the sheer terror of that, yeah. when you look back, what happened? That's what I was trying to say before that, um, These people never really hurt me. Mm. If anything, I grew. No, not from that one thing, except to say, wow, what the, you know, that there was another people, there are other people out there. But I'm just saying how my life was lived, was lived afterwards. The reptilians get the bad rap, but just like, you know, I use the example, if, if a black person took your mother's pocketbook and ran down the street, does that mean all black people or no? Right. So, you you know, there's some reptilians that are probably not evolved, just like there's some people of color. Or that, and we like, because of the intellectual laziness. Mm-hmm. Wonderful yeah. book by R.A. Boulet, um, uh, Mankind's Reptilian Past. There are some stories in Mesopotamia where these, in Japan, these serpents are friendly. Mm. They, they And then there's some that are not. There's some dragons that are not. But we lump it all because that's what we do as human beings, because we don't want to think through things. I mean, if you look at the, what do you call it, uh, the, 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 the symbol of the medical profession, mm-hmm. that's a serpent going around that. Mm-hmm. That's a healing thing. In Mesopotamian, Anki is one of the, he's a god of many things, but he's a healer. And I'm sorry, Enki. And so he, that's his symbol was the serpent, you know? I look at the Bible and, you know, the serpent is the one who tries to tell Eve. It's not tempting. It's the Mesopotamian story that which it was come from. The gods don't want you to do that because you'll become like them. Right now, they want to keep you so ignorant, you don't even know you're naked. Mm -hmm. It's the other people after that that are saying, well, you shouldn't have had that. And so now you're going to have pain in childbirth and we're going to, the Tower of Babel story, you're getting above yourself. We're going to. Mess that up for you. Those are the ones you want to look out for. Anki, the, 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 the serpent, is trying to say, you can be evolved. What's the threat? The only threat 
is that when you look at those stories and when you look at Yahweh, that we don't want an educated populace. We don't want you becoming like us. We want you to mine the gold, as they talk about. We want you to stay ignorant. We want you to serve us. We don't want you to have the powers that we have, but people don't read and they don't know. And I'm not trying to say just because I'm doing this, this as a scholar. No, but we do that with each other. We go by appearances. You can look at that story. You can, and, and even if you don't believe that story, you have to look at how Yahweh acts in all of the Bible and you have to say, wait a minute. Is this a God mm -hmm. who's saying kill the men, women, and children in Canaan? Is this a God who, when the, when, the, when when the Israelites complain and ask them, we need some food, this manna, what is it? We don't know. We've been walking around for almost 40 years. He, he goes off. Is this a God who gets mad at Saul because he doesn't do scorched earth? No, I mean, I mean, it's right there, but we've been taught. Don't question the Bible, the Old Testament. When you read those stories through that lens of, you know, the translations, it's about colonization. It's about um, obedience to law and rule. And it's about fear. Mm -hmm. And our ancestors were trying to tell us that we came in contact with these beings. And this is what we had to go through. And maybe you won't have to go through it. Mm -hmm. That's how I read those stories. But there's no way I'm going to get down on my knees or sit in meditation to somebody like Yahweh. There's just no way. If you read those stories as God's stories, you miss the moral. And that's how we're taught to read them. But if you read them as they are, you start to question, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. And that's what I'm trying to get people to at least look at. Right. You know, uh, because when we bomb each other, when we take each other's resources, when we say, I mean, Yahweh, you, you got to be circumcised. He don't want you to intermarry. You can't have any other gods before me. That's jealousy, that's insecurity. And if that's the God you worship, then you have to justify. If, if, you, if you believe in a God who's okay to do genocide, then you have to justify genocide. If you believe in a God that's always about us and them, then you have to justify us and them. And look what's going on in the world in the name of religion, especially the monotheistic religions. Mm -hmm. We see what's going on in the Middle East. Right. They all happen. They all they got it's a lot it's it's a lot of layers to it. There's mm -hmm. oil, there's farm, but they all happen to believe in a vengeful God. And it's okay, an eye for an eye. You do this to me, I can do that to you. When Jesus comes along, and I'm not saying you got to believe Jesus, there are other teachers, mm -hmm. master teachers, that, but he's saying, I'm you got to bring your A game. I'm 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 gonna change the rule a little bit. Mm -hmm. You maybe kind of want to try to love. Just try to so love him. So, so here we go. And you look at Christianity today. If Jesus came back today, the same people who call themselves Christians, they would they would do it again. They would crucify him again. Right. Hosanna on 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 Sunday. By Friday, give us Barabbas. The, 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 this kind of Christianity, which is called it's a Constantinian, it's a state religion. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Cornell West calls it Constantinian Christianity. Right. That's not the Christianity that that was originally supposed yeah. to uh, spread through the world. It was co-opted to for to expand an empire, mm -hmm. right? To, with the Constantine exactly, Roman empire. and we live in the Roman Empire now. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is like a lot. We could we could spend like all day, really. Uh, well, we got I, another I, hour, brother. We got, no, we got no, time. No, I'm trying. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, I know so. you're trying. You, we, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna be methodical. Yeah, yeah. no, so we not. Want, and we want to get back to the healing, but I I'm do. But I know. but I want to let let this roll though, and maybe we can find a, a point to get back to the healing. But I, I want to. So I guess my point was just I'm uh, I'm careful with my questions, but um, here's what I'm thinking of asking you then. You know, you were talking about the Yahweh. You're talking about the ancient history and all this, mm. and I, I really value your take on that. 
you're someone who's studied the scriptures. You've got your book, Alien Scriptures. You've, you've given this a lot of, of study. And that's, that's amazing. So I want to zoom out for a second and ask you this question. Bigger picture. Yes. In, in your study of this whole idea that in our ancient past, um, you know, at least roughly 6,000 years ago where we have those first writings that we uncovered from the Sumerians and then there's the whole line of how that became the Abrahamic religions and all that. Um, and, and of course, people say it goes back even further, which is mm -hmm. you know, yeah. definitely pro probably true. You know, um, of course, I don't know for sure. I don't know if anyone does, but uh, my question is, so what do you think like in, in your research, right? In your assessment, what do you think the story is to the best of your knowledge? Like did, did beings come here and were we created by them? Um, and yeah. I'll, just, I'll just let you go with that. Yeah. Like, where, yeah, where do you yeah, see yeah. the evidence for that? Well, I, if you, well, you know, you, you, if you look in Genesis six, if you look in the book of Enoch, if you go back and read, uh, the, the, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Emu uh -huh. Elise, it's right there. Uh -huh. It's more, it's, it's more blatant in Mesopotamian culture because they don't, they don't, they're not even trying to come, well, there's a, a god or whatever. They're just saying these beings came. If you look in Mesoamerican stories, uh, 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 Quetzalcoatl, Kukul Khan, uh, when they, when these beings came down and created human beings in every made, in every culture, they all have the same story. They all have the same story, whether it's the Nordic culture, whether it's, it's South Africa, whether it's Babylonian with Oannes, if it's in uh, the Zulu culture, some beings come down. There's usually after a cataclysm and they kind of jumpstart us. You so see it in take, the Bible. Hmm? What's your take on how academia has always just said that's like the human psyche and it's all symbolic because that was a big breakthrough for me, right? I was taught that my whole life and I always found the mythologies intriguing as a kid and, and I was into it. And then as I was older, I, I stumbled upon that idea that, oh, wait, what if they were just literally describing what was happening and the gods were other beings? And I, and I was like, wow, that actually makes more sense to me. But why do you think like it's always been taught that, oh, it's just symbolic? You know. Well, I think uh, I think there are many reasons. The first reason I think is human prejudice. Mm. Um, I also think there's the fear of one losing tenure and ridicule and mm. losing a job. I also think that when when you colonize people, you have to take you you know the, I'm, well the Catholic Church one of the biggest perpetrators, um, not the only, mm -hmm. but you have to take away the indigenous, indigenous knowledge. You have to take away those stories because you have to be able to control the populace. And if you want to be an American, you're, let's say you're indigenous, and this is not just with people of color, you could Celtic, what they did with Irish, what... Um, you know, in order for you to be successful, you have to start thinking and talking and dressing like the dominant culture. You have to, if you want to be successful. And so that means that those stories about star people or indigenous folklore about healing and what plants and stuff, no, 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 that's ignorant. You can't, we don't want that. And you see it in Australia, you see it in all these imperialism empire does that. Let's cut your hair because they know that, uh, you know, when the hair is long, there's, you can have a more of a connection with, 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 with other dimensions and unseen. Forms. We don't want any of that. Mm -hmm. We want this. You're easy to govern. And, and you, we want this God, the emperor. And then there's the bishops, like I said, that's that pyramid, and at the bottom there's you. Mm -hmm. And we need, we don't want that. That's why people, you know, you kidnap the little Indian children, you cut their hair, you get rid of all the priests and stuff. You don't want that knowledge passed down. You keep it about other dimensions and that kind of spirituality. We don't know. You don't need to know that. So we you will think keep the it. gods that are the quote gods kind of did this too. 
Right, of course man. they did. And right. and we got it from them. Not mm. all of them. I mentioned some. So who, like you the, know, the rulers I mean, like learned how to do that from them. The, the rulers, that, first the you had the God rule. You uh-huh. had the God ruling. Remember? And remember they came here as, and we were a workforce. Sitchin talks about it. The Mesopotamian texts talk about it. Uh, you know, Zachariah Sitchin talks about that. Then, as they kind of backed off after many boots and reboots of you know, of of, of uh, upgrades and what have you. Then they left mm-hmm. and their offspring who were half human, they were hybrids. Then they were the rulers. Right. They were the rulers. And then they left. And then they appointed priests, bishops, whatever you want to call it. Why do you and think they re- left? The experiment was up. I, I have no idea. Maybe we were just harder to rule because we were difficult to rule. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, and in, 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 in you see it in the Bible. Uh, you know, well, you know, now they now they know this, and now they're getting a little smarter. So let's cut it off. Let's they're only going to live this many years. We can't have them living. So you know, it was it was a controlled experiment for some, not all. Uh-huh. And so then you have. Human beings ruling, uh-huh. warring, fighting. Where did they learn that from? They learned it from the gods because they fought among themselves as well. Right. You see it in Greek mythology. You see it in the pages of the Bible. They're fighting over Project Earth. Mm-hmm. Yahweh says, I don't want you worshiping them. It's me. I'm the one. This is my land. This is Palestine. This is my, because everybody's allotted a piece of the land. So you are allotted the people on the land as well. And, and that's what I think is so hard to wrap our minds around because then it's like, well, where is God in all this? Where does, what, 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 is that really, what does that really mean? We have the hybridization programs that they were doing, and all civilizations talk about this. They call it by different names. Mm. Uh, 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 and so here we are. Here we are now. The government's, United States' most secretive, gov- secretive government, Mm-hmm. Of, of, around this topic, and they're, they're they're spoon feeding us this. They don't want to tackle religion yet. Right now, they think it's all about tech. Of course, they would because we'll use the tech to conquer to make weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll get to the religious part, and then it'll be their own narrative. Uh, but that's what I want people to see the through line here. I'm not trying to take away your faith. I'm just trying to say, but you want to rethink it. Mm-hmm. And all these cultures have that same story, and it's by design. I talked about Josiah, Hezekiah, Judaism, primitive Judaism was was polytheistic. Mm -hmm. They talked about Asherah, uh, a Hathor in the Egyptian uh, pantheon, uh, Astarte. Uh, You know, they talked, these women brought, these female extraterrestrials, they taught us how to farm. How to drink beer? How to make beer? How to how to start civil? How to do sanitation? So now now you've taken away the whole female aspect to this thing because now it's now it's become all male. But they were here, right. you know. She's Venus, Aphrodite in the Roman pantheon. But but our ancestors what, are they all making this up? Are they all making this up that these beings come from the sky? Some of them came out of the ocean and they could fly as well. It's hard, it's a difficult sell that this is all made up. But I get it because, you know, if you're working for, for on something 10 years, a hypothesis and you're tenured and now what? UAPs? What? What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it's fascinating. And do you think that... Um, I I think one of the best actually evidence of of this whole question is that the Sumerians just come out of nowhere and have all of these advancements. Like it doesn't make sense logically to me that you would go from being like a hunter gatherer, like stone age. And then like that you're like making seconds and minutes and, and and calculating the distance to the sun within it. It doesn't make sense. Like, so if you just look at it, like common sense, it's like, okay, something doesn't add up here. You right, know? there was a jump start, and they're open about it. They say, they're not trying to make it monotheistic. They're saying these beings came. Right. I'll tell you, for me, 
what's even more astounding, Mm -hmm. not that it's a competition, but I'm just saying our government was telling us that these beings didn't exist, but yet the clearance for this information was above top secret. It was above the atom bomb, but it doesn't exist. You know, so why do you have top secret files on a phenomenon that you say doesn't exist? Yeah. And 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 I mean, it sounds so. Right. Yeah. Well, the modern. I agree. Like the mo- going. right. The modern like UFO alien issue. Let's say roughly like 1940s to now. I I 100 agree with you. Like logic and common sense will get you to the conclusion that it's real. Like you don't even need yeah stuff yeah. like what you just said. It's real. You know, it's like it's so clear that there's something real. And um, it would it would be so wildly unlikely that it's it's all made up fabricated lies you know like it, yeah. it's that's so ra- that's more radically believable than the fact that it's just a real thing you know <laughs> yes so, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm like blown away but of course you know like kierkegaard said life is uh live forward but it's only understood backwards and so you know looking back because i didn't see it i mean i'm 66 mm-hmm. years old mm-hmm. and it was right there in front of me but it's like what was that tom cruise movie eyes wide shut you know, it was right there. You want to hide something? Just hide it in plain sight. It's like the Truman Show, really, too. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. It feels like that. Um, th- to the ancient stuff, uh, this was this is an, a random out there thing, but I thought of it as you were talking, and then I was thinking the Sumerians, all the inventions they 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 invented the sixty seconds, the the sixty minutes in an hour, and the weeks and all that. Do you think that? they that maybe like the rulership purposely did that to like box in humans or do you think it was just like hum- them trying to figure out how to like order organize things no i i feel like and time I think, is the invention of time if we could call it i that. think that it was 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 some extraterrestrials who because if you go back to those stories in babylon and the akkadian transcripts and all that stuff Mm -hmm. there was a group of extraterrestrials that wanted to see where this experiment was going to go and then there was some like Enlil and Yahweh who they may have been the same thing you hear different scholars Mm -hmm. argue different things that was like no we're going to keep them barefoot and pregnant Mm -hmm. to coin a phrase and Anki Anki is Anki. generally believed that he actually, along with his sister or someone, like actually is the one who kind of created the. Yeah. Yes. Thing, right? He and was like said, a scientist. He was yeah, like, I don't want to give up on my experiment. Um, right. And he was Let's he kind of like tried go. to help help us. Right. That's the idea. And they were brothers. Anki and, and I Anamu. think that's how I think that's how mm-hmm. and why uh, we're still here. Uh, you know that, that 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 I talked about the other day about that council Mm -hmm. that um what's the brother's name wasn't it right before like the flood the the catastrophes and the flood was sent they had like a meeting and and anki like walked out or something and like yeah and there were different floods yeah yes yes and anki warned his name is so long i can't remember it or pronounce it Uh but he was like the babylonian noah Oh, and Udna, Udna Amos Pashtim, right? Yeah, something like that. And so the so so the Hebrew accounts are just a, re, a reworking of those. How does the how does how does the monotheistic religions how do they treat that? Because that's always stuck out to me that like it's so it, it's indisputable, right? You have the Epic of Gilgamesh, right? that's earlier than any Christian or Hebrew writings, right? Mm -hmm. That's not debated. Mm -hmm. And it literally has the same exact flood story. So like, well, they all do the Hopi. Hopi What what is like mainstream? I don't know. They just, well, they, they, they don't deal with it. Number one, but those who do deal with it, generally speaking, want to have the monopoly of the uniqueness of these Christianity Judaism, Islam. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's the same thing when we talk about, did Jesus go to India? 
which there's a lot of evidence that he may have, but 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 Christianity says no, there's no truth to that because we want to have the monopoly of the, of the of this one story. This is our story. Mm-hmm. There's no other. Yeah, and so there it is. Uh, uh, but monotheism again uh, does what it does, and and we saw it with the Cathars. Uh, they wiped those folks out uh, mm-hmm. when they were talking about healing and maybe there are other there's other life forms in the universe and what have you. We cannot have that. We cannot have that. There was that one and, guy, right? And he, all he was saying was that like all religions can come together and cooperate, and they like burned him alive, right? Do you know who I'm talking yeah, about? Bruno, <laughs> uh, yeah, Bruno. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he was a Unitarian. That's he was wild. a Unitarian. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just he, but he had. Well, that's why in, in 2009, when uh, Pope Gregory the 16th came out and said, I mean, Pope Gregory, um, well, I got him in my notes here. Anyway, when he comes out and says that we shouldn't be surprised to see um, you have uh, uh, ETs in the Bible, that's why I said, boy, that raised my eyebrow because 400, 500 years ago, just you speculating that would get you mm. killed. Who was it? Uh, Pope Benedict, sorry, mm. the 16th in 2009. Uh-huh. He asked the po- Pontifical Academy of Sciences to hold a symposium to discuss the theological consequences of contact with other spacefaring civilizations. Right. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk about the Vatican having known about oh the, for a no long question. time and that they no question you know this idea that went that a lot of the works from the Library of Alexandria like they kind of took took the best of them and kept them in the vat and of course the Vatican archives are like off limits right and, and they're off limits there, there but, was like but, a couple of there was that one Russian guy. An article came out in the last twenty years that this this obscure Russian researcher who was in the Vatican archives like saw all this this documentation of of ancient ETs and all that and I don't know there's a lot of intrigue around that what what's your take on that? Well, you know what what I'm finding out is that there's a kernel of truth in all of it, mm-hmm. even in the disinformation because disinformation that's what it does it gives you a kernel of truth and then it wraps it around. But the the Vatican has been pushing this. Um, why do you think they're coming up? I mean, for 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 uh, 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 Monsignor Baladucci and what's the other brother's name? Guy, Father Guy. Anyway, um, you know, they have to have a clearance to say that. They're, they're speaking for the Pope. Mm-hmm. And when the Pope comes out, Pope Francis has come out in a, and, and obviously Benedict saying, don't be surprised. To me, that's the, that's disclosure. Mm-hmm. That's disclosure. That, that whole list that I went down at the... Um, at the at the Connecticut uh, conference, mm-hmm. those were they, they were in the paper. None of those people were medicated. None of them were uh, uh, rebuked. None of them lost their jobs. Yeah. And, yeah. and and but for them to come out and say that, you better believe it that they had a clearance to say that. They had permission to say that. It was just a trial balloon, Paul Hellyer. And yeah. but but people are so where's disclosure? Where's disclosure? It's been being disclosed all along. Yeah. But if you're waiting for the emperor to come out and say, hey, I got something to tell you, pull up a chair, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Right. No. Yeah, no. That, that was one of the points that really resonated with me strongly from your presentation, is what, mm-hmm. what you were just saying. Um, I mean, the guy, listen, I am the shot. Yeah. He's not the only one. Paul Hellyer was. This was the Brigadier General, Anthony. Mm-hmm. 2020, December 8th, I remember. Right before Christmas. What a Christmas present. He said, there's a galactic federation that Israel, the United States, and other countries have been in touch with. He said that um, uh, that that there's some ETs who don't want disclosure until you know, until we get a better understanding of what space is. Mm-hmm. which I thought was an interesting way to put it, and that there's bases on Mars. 
This is what he said. Nobody came out and disclaimed it. Nobody turned to life just went on. I mean, yeah. How, how, how much more, how much disclosure do you want? I'm with you hundred percent. And, and I, yeah. I was, I was excited when you brought that up because, you know, I, I've done a good amount of research into this, you know, and I've got like documents of notes and like that to me is like, I have seen almost no one talk about it. And to mm -hmm. me, it's the most blatant, like in your face, like the, the, he was 30 years of the space, top of the space ministry yeah. defense program. And he says that nobody discredits him. Nobody says he's crazy. Um, and it's just like, he just said it like, like <laughs> it's yeah. wild. It's wild. Is nobody it, in, well, that, I, that I know of in the Israeli government condemned him. Like nobody, I no. didn't see any of that. So it's like, no, okay, then he, why would this guy say that? You know, <laughs> it, it's, it's cognitive dissonance. Uh, I right. can, what, right. Again, look, 2008, Dmitry uh, Medvedev, deputy chairman, Putin's right hand, at least one of them, uh -huh. of the Sec Security Council on a hot mic, on a live mic. Uh -huh. He says that every prime minister of Russia is given a folder, a dossier detailing the spacefaring civilizations that all these governments are in contact with. Wow. And Putin said nothing. No one said anything. It was, life just went on. And that I'm was like, released, like, to the public. That's yeah, summary. he said on a hot mic. You would think that, that the president would at least just, or someone, spokesperson would say, like, this is, you know, nonsense. This is fabrication. It's wild. I wonder if moments like that are this actual galactic federation being like okay you you have to start dripping it out cuz eventually you know it's going to be disclosure and and you so this has got to go through you can't smear this i don't yeah, know yeah that's that's what people are speculating grudge came out there's some people you know i don't know if it's real some cia folks are saying they're not giving any date but they're saying in a few years that's why this is being pushed out more and more because we've only got a few years left. I don't know whether that means a few years is five years, three years. I don't know whether it means a big rock is going to hit us. I don't know if it means there's a ship coming and you won't be able to deny it, but there's this is coming to a head. Now, Grush really put them in a bind, but all this other stuff, Trump, Ukraine, um, you know, Middle East, you notice now there's no talk about this. Right. It buys them time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is intentional. This is intentional. For Grush to come out, for Elizondo to come out, for Jacques Ballet to come out, for Eric Davis to come out, they have had, because you had to sign clearances for this stuff. And for them to come out and say that, they had to be given permission to do that. Right. No way. I guess they just can... come out. So. Right. I guess the concern with Grush is like, is this, you know, if there's this controlling faction that's kind of behind this, the suppression of all this, um, or multiple, let's say, is are they, and I think you made a point to this uh, the other day, was like, they want to be like, okay, how can we get this out, but still control it? So it's like, in your take, do you feel that Grush, like, and the disclosure will be will be kind of like they'll they'll control the narrative a little bit and determine yeah, what, they're what always gets trying to control what the narrative. Uh -huh. Well, they, well, what they're going to do is um, they're going to do what uh, Eric Van Braun said, told Carol Rosen they were going to do back in the 70s or 80s when on his deathbed. He said that there was going to be a false flag. He said all of this was going to be based on a lie. He said he talked about the wars that were lined up with Iran with you know with Afghan you know with, and he said that they're going to cause a, a false flag the next big war will be against extraterrestrials so they're going to call once they started talking about and that's why I was a little dubious with Elizondo mm -hmm. once he started talking about national security I said oh this is a new enemy this is a new enemy Right. So what they're going to do is, because they can't tell you anymore that they don't exist, but what they can do is tell you, but you got to watch out for them. These are enemies. They're not going to make the distinction 
like the Bible does in those stories or the New Testament. They're not going to make that distinction. These beings are your enemy. And that way they keep you afraid. They keep you on the edge of your seat. They don't, you, you don't start talking about, wait a minute, you guys have been hiding this for 70 years. You know, I know people who lost their jobs. I know people who were killed over this. So you don't turn on them. Mm-hmm. It's like, look over there. They're, 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 watch out. And it works because it's Machiavellian, but it works. It works. And that's how they're going to control the narrative. We've been trying to tell you little by little. We couldn't just tell you everything. Mm -hmm. But now we're telling you, look out. Here they come. Watch out. Yeah. So they still control the narrative. That's why people like you with your podcast, people like me, we need to speak out Mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do. Some people, they want to do race relations. Some people want to do the climate change. Some people, I want to do exopolitics. Yeah. I do that other stuff too, but this is where my energy has been drawing me because this is all exopolitics. And people who say in the UFO community, I don't get into politics, you you know, come on, put down the crack pipe. This whole thing is exopolitics from Eisenhower till now. And you see it in the Bible. This politics, there's this hidden hand our ancestors were telling us. There's an ET layer in your in your covert government, in your finances, in your foreign policy. It's right there. What can can you quote anything offhand from the, the scriptures that is telling us? I can that? point you right to I can point you right to the here. Hold on. I talked about it yesterday because I didn't know whether this was a spirit or whether it was an actor. In um First Kings 22, 19, 23. Mm-hmm. First Kings, chapter 22, verses 19 to 23. The prophet Micaiah, not to be mixed up with Micah, he remote views. He says he's having a vision in the spirit, but we would call it remote viewing. An ET council meeting, which I call a galactic federation. It's the ET council meeting. Okay. He calls it the heavenly host, the heavenly council. The heavenly council. Okay. Where a false flag operation is being discussed by Yahweh and others. And and in the story, Yahweh wants Israel to start a war with another faction. And they have these prophets there and they trust these prophets. But Yahweh says, how can I do this? Who can help me in this spirit? And it says a spirit comes, not an angel. Not He says, I will put a lying spirit in the mouth of their prophet. Yahweh says, go, do it. That's foreign policy. Mm. And you're trying to start, we would call that a false flag today. Wow. Okay. Let's go to Acts 15. Paul is talking about God, what that means, what it means, God in Greek. He tells them, this is a council meeting when they decide, Acts 15, that they're not going to follow the the laws of Yahweh anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus has died. He's what, but, and they, and they say, you don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to do certain things. That's what Yahweh said you did, but we're we're going to do Jesus's way. We're doing another way. Here's one I think you'll like, you'll find curious. First Samuel chapter eight, the people want human rule, which is a clue. If Yahweh's God, why would you want someone else to rule you? You want God to rule you, right? The people want human rule. They accuse Yahweh's prophet Samuel and his three sons of being corrupt. They're Mm -hmm. stealing from the temple. This is this could be in the headlines of today. Right. Uh, 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 The other one that I really like, though, is um, Michael. This is in Daniel. Yeah, Daniel chapter ten, thirteen. Another ET comes to assist Daniel. He says, and he says, this is chapter 10, verse thing, uh-huh. verse 13. He says, I would have got here sooner, but the prince of Persia was giving me a hard time. They were fighting. And the prince of Persia may have been a hybrid because a human being's not going to give this angel a hard time. He says, so I got Michael to come to battle the prince of Persia. He said, the angel says, I was, I, I waited 21 days. I waited three weeks until Michael showed up. The angel Michael. So I, I meant to get here to you, Daniel, but I'm fighting the king of Persia. Michael comes and relieves me. I'm waiting three weeks. Michael comes, the angel Michael. 
so right. I can come and talk to you. Brother, these are ETs fighting among right. themselves and, they, and, 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 and having uh, human beings fighting with armies for them. It's right there. There's no other way you can read that. But we don't read it. And we, we just don't because we've been taught that these are God stories. Right. I, I had taken a note from your presentation the other day. You said um, you said it's in plain sight, but we've been taught not to look at it. Yeah. We've been taught that these are God stories because they rewrote it. Josiah in the uh, 6th and 7th century, King Hezekiah, because they wanted, you know, we don't want you or Asherah. We don't want you with Dagon. Uh, we don't want you. We want, we want it to be a monotheistic theocracy. God, king, priests, the people. One temple in Jerusalem. One temple. All the shekels, all the money flows in. It's like what we do today. Yeah. yeah. So they tear down all the altars to, to, to these other gods. Right. You don't worship other gods. I'm the only one. Right. And I'll kill you if you do. I'll make your life miserable if you do. What kind of God gets mad at Saul because Saul doesn't wipe out everybody? Yahweh says, the Lord, I want you to, I don't want, I don't want to hear anybody breathing. Saul doesn't do it. Samuel goes to Saul. Why didn't you obey Yahweh? He says, I got all the good stuff for him. I, I, this, I wasn't trying to disobey. I gave him this stuff. Because, oh, Samuel says, do I hear the bleeding of sheep? Mm -hmm. What happened? So Yahweh wants scorched earth. So Saul sa uh, uh, Samuel says, you're no longer king. Yahweh says, you're, what kind of God wants a scorched earth policy and relieves you because you didn't wipe out everybody? That's not a God. That's an ET who needs Xanax and maybe some counseling. <laughs> That's not a God. There's no God I want to hang out with. Right. And it's right there. It's right there. Yeah. They may phrase it a different way in different translations, but it's right there. What kind of, uh, it, to me, the angel knows I, three weeks. He's looking at his watch or whatever. It's, I, I would have been here sooner. Took me three weeks. I'm fighting the, the Prince of Persia. So Michael came and relieved me so I could come to you. Man, that doesn't sound like an omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient entity. Right. That sounds like ETs fighting over Project Earth. Right. What are your thoughts on that in those ancient times there was in the Babylonian uh civilization or probably before but i know a lot of authors date it to to babylon like this development of the of the secret society and how they've just this idea that they from that point figured out how they could pull the strings and now for thousands of years they've essentially through the bloodlines have been continuing to do that what's your thoughts i think on that's that? very i know uh, david i talks about that i think that's very look we were taught what we were taught but it's not like that. It's one king or president, you know, and there's the gods above them. And, you know, there's this whole line of blue bloods or whatever you want to call it, who say we can trace our bloodline back past 6,000 years. We can go back to 106,000 years. And they, and they say because they went back to that kind of royalty where the gods anointed you to rule. Do you think that that's, yes. that's true? I think that's very true. Yeah. It yeah. seems like Who was it, it was it know. Roosevelt. Roosevelt said presidents are not elected; they're selected. You see it now. Right. You see the shift because this was a great experiment. Democracy we've never had true democracy. But even looking at our political situation, mm -hmm. democracy you're supposed to choose your candidates. We're being told your candidate is Biden. Or Trump. Right. That's it. Yeah, the party. Right there. It's, it's hidden in plain sight. Such a joke. People say, oh, yeah. we live in a democracy. Not when you're being told these are your only two choices. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure, we can have those other people. They can run, but, you know.
They can yeah. run. Come on. Well, right, you know, like there are other yeah. religions, but we know Christianity, wink, wink, is the only real one. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. This is this is it. And this is and that's why we need to go back and look at that Bible and, and, and these other texts, read them next to each other, because they're telling us our ancestors are saying, this is what we had to go through. And we want you to know that there's a way you can have a better human experience, that there is a creation, a creation, mm-hmm. or what do you want to call it? Uh, and, and, and that you can get in touch with that. But you've got to beware because. There's this overlay. Ephesians six twelve uh-huh. says it. Um, now, 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 more conservative brothers and sisters will read it this way, but a more fundamental way. But hold on, Ephesians six, I think it's twelve. Let's see. Okay, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, so it's not just against humans, but against the rulers against the authorities, so that's laws, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Mm. So there are other forces. There's some ETs that are for us and there's some against us, but it says right here, in the heavenly realms. The heavenly realms are above us. And, and and this is what he's saying. This is what our struggle is against. Not just flesh and blood. You know, not just, you know, our bodies, our egos, our emotions. Not against the laws of authorities, but the powers of, dark, of this dark world against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's what the battle is against. Yeah, and I guess it would... It would make sense. I don't know what you think. If you were trying to continue to, to control a planet, let's say, uh, a whole race of beings effectively, it I would think it would be more effective to do it covertly than to do it overtly, right? So it would kind of like make sense why it would be this secret kind of network that pull, has pulled strings behind the scenes for millennia. And then we get cut off. Well, yeah, that was a little sketchy, but yeah, right when we get yeah. <laughs> all right, but whatever. I'm a, I don't care, man. I'm not I'm not worried about anything. No, no, it's like all good. It's all good. No, it's, <laughs> it's just sometimes you know things happen. We know it's tech, but sometimes you wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, what 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 what's going well, on? What's the perfect timing? Yeah, what I said. Yeah. So I'll yeah. just skip that question, I guess. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no. I guess my, I don't know if you heard me. My point was just like, it would make sense, I guess, if you wanted to rule to do it quietly than to do it like overtly. Well, right? well, 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 remember when, when they get rid of, when they fire Yahweh, he's in the background. He's still tampering. He still needs you to do this. Need you need a lying spirit to go down there and make this prophet look bad. Um, so yeah, yeah. And which is going on today because uh, higher Mashad, uh, if he what he says is true, Paul Hellyer, the late Paul Hellyer, they're saying that our governments are in touch. We, we don't know that. Mm-hmm. So who's calling the shots? To me, that there's some good news and maybe some not so good news. But to me, um, that means that there is that council. I see why we're not being the information is not more democratized because we don't know the treaties that have been made. It's probably just more than one treaty that we probably have different treaties with different uh, groups. And so maybe, maybe we can't be more open because of the treaties that we have. And if, and, and if what he's right, if he's saying there, there are people on that committee who want d- d- disclosure and there are people who don't. There are people in Congress who want disclosure and there are people in Congress who are fundamentalist Christians who say this whole thing is about demons and stuff. And we, you know, no. Mm-hmm. And so when we get frustrated because we think decisions are being made here, but they're really being made here. Yeah, that was one of the points from the conference you made that I, to me, was very novel perspective. Um, and again, like I've listened to so many people talk about this topic 
And it's like, oh, why why would they want to keep it secret? And there's all the different ideas and, and rational reasons why. But that was one, the way you put it, that it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, and is more compelling. Like, no, there's someone, there's even higher authority yes. that's saying, so, no, you can't tell them. Sorry. Yeah. And that's why they have to just like shamefully be like, yeah, we have plain evidence. The, the little video that's been going around for five years now, like, of, of of like a saucer, you know, the Nimitz video or whatever, uh, yes. or is that the, the gimbal? Tic-tac. The, the gimbal. Yeah. You know, it's like ridiculous. It look, it's like, <laughs> so I don't know. That, that, that point I, mean, I thought what, was a really good that's point. That's what I'm that you, thinking. I mean, Eisenhower had to make a decision, and I'm glad it wasn't me. But now that there are multiple players at the table, mm-hmm. I mean, we know, we know, number one, nuclear fission's involved. We know that mm-hmm. because that's what they, some of them were very concerned about mm-hmm. after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But, and we know the Greys came. The Nordics came and said, give up the nukes and we can, you know, show you how to grow spiritually or whatever. You don't want to do that. So then did, we know some think- Greys came. Do you think that that idea that when we when we set off the test, the Trinity test of the nuclear bomb, that that would like attracted some beings to come like. There's data that show that that it's data that show that shows and and that sightings increased after that. It it is a big correlation, right? You had the Ken Arnold and then the whole right 40s, 50s, just tons of sightings, a lot of them over that, that New Mexico area. Yeah, there seems to be data to support it that, and it would make perfect sense. We got some neighbors down the block who are very dangerous, and we need to go check it out. Because obviously, when you split the atom, it reverberates in different dimensions and and what have you. And they ought to know. Yeah. Do you think that there's, uh, do you think that there's, there's inner earth civilizations? Yes, I do. I think that the Hopi touched on it when they talk about the ant people. I think that they probably, um, and we know that, we know that, the, you know, in these the underground tunnels and caves, I mean, I think there's data to lend itself to that. And, you know, some of the, some of them look human, some of them may be insectoid looking, plus the ant look. Um, yeah, yeah, why not? Right. That, sometimes I almost feel like people would be more shocked to find that out than that, like, there's there's beings from outer space. That are like on well, the inside of the I planet, think, if there's just been for thousands of years, like these. Yeah, they kind of yeah. what they, but they they may have come from space and just stayed here. It would make What's sense, like you 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 could survive a lot more surface level catastrophes, right? If you're on yes. the interior, yeah. Kind of. Well, we sense. saw in the Vietnam War, and even, um, uh, you know, that we bombed, we dropped more bombs on them. That, uh, that were more than the equivalent of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they won that war without an air force. They beat one of the greatest powers in the world, us. And they, a lot of them survived by going underground when we were bombing them. What's interesting is they released two hostages yesterday, uh, two more hostages, and they said that they were underground in like a spider web. Of, so, yeah. yeah. So if we can do that, why can't a more advanced civilization? Yeah. Have you heard that idea? This one intrigues me. Um, it's like on my list to, to try to actually research and see if I could dig up some some better evidence. Uh, it's, it's pretty out there, but it's pretty intriguing. The idea that the Iraq war in 03 and all that was because Saddam Hussein had, had found some kind of... Some sort. portals. Yeah. What do you yeah, think yeah, about I, that I, I think it's true. There was a guy, I think that um, there was some, um, there was a, a guy on a radio show who was talking about, he had interviewed several vets who, they didn't know each other, but they met there and they said, well, yeah, we, our mission was supposed to be one thing, but then we wound up having to protect these archaeological sites and we had, to, and they were coming to him because he talked about portals and stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's real. I really do. I think yeah. that whatever, whatever we were taught was wrong. We yeah. were just told lies. And that, because that's what Mesopotamia being Iraq, what else is there? Those, I mean, because what we're talking about, Enki, Aaliyah, and what, they were all in that part of the, of the world. Right. In Palestine, in, 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 in the Middle East. 
what and we there, call the Middle East. Right. And there was some talk that they might have found the tomb of Gilgamesh. Mm-hmm. So I started going down that rabbit hole, right? And and I, I actually was able to email the professor the, that was leading that archaeological survey. Um, and I emailed him and I was like, did you, like, what happened? What's the story? And he told me that they they had done the surveying with whatever technology, you know, and they saw like the shape of the chamber. And according to the records, I guess from the text, they, they that's what the article that came out was about. It was like they were like thinking it it could really be the tomb of Gilgamesh. The the news kind of like sensationalized and like they found the tomb of Gilgamesh. But so then I asked him, I was like, oh, whatever happened? And then he was like, well, then right after that, the Iraq war started. So we had to leave. And and the site was guarded um, by, and he said, like an unknown, like um, hired force mm-hmm. of, of guards. And to me, my, mm-hmm. my, I was like, hmm, hmm. Yeah, they found something. <laughs> and they yeah. didn't need them anymore. Listen, they're lucky to be alive. They could have, something could have happened to them. Yeah. Let them go. Um, but yeah, yeah. Otherwise, why would you be there? Right. The timing does seem. I, I feel bad for uh, Colin Powell and those folks because. They had to make the case. They had to lie and say, yeah. I don't feel sorry, but you could have had some cojones and said no. But um, yeah. they had to make the case. So all those thousands of people yeah. died. Dude, yeah, not 9-11, dude, that's that's going to be a bombshell. They're, they're like still going. I don't know how close you follow that, but like just a couple, like a month ago, they went to a grand jury. There's been like this whole movement of architects and engineers for for 9-11 truth is what they call they have like a team of of lawyers they have 3,500 architects and engineers that for 20 years have been putting this case forward and yeah i don't know how much you studied that that story but it's like very obvious that the official story is not true and and i think that's gonna shock a lot of people you know yeah that's got to come out at some point (laughs) yeah yeah it probably, I'd be surprised if it came out anytime soon. Right now, mm-hmm. we're, we're fighting two wars, probably going to fight a third one, maybe, if we're not careful with China. Um, mm-hmm. And um, so where, where, where there's such a low level of trust in the Supreme Court and the government, that'd be the last thing that yeah. you would need. The only way that story comes out, I think, is if you want to have chaos and then you declare martial law, and then it's all moot anyway. But until that happens, yeah, Biden wants keep re-election. The, they got to yeah. keep the lid on that. Huh? Yep. But they, but they have a hard job, man, yeah. because it's like, they well, they rely on psychology, which works, right? Like, you don't want to believe it. But but if you can just objectively look at it with, with, a, with a non-biased mind and just look at it, it's like so obvious. Well, wait, well, but listen, we were saying the same thing about the and, and, and I'm not saying that who did what, but it's so obvious the story, the official story is well, well, impossible. Listen, <laughs> but listen, we're saying this about the Bible. If you uh-huh. look at it with an open mind, you'll see what I'm right. saying. But people won't look at it that way. And that's what right. the government counts on. I you heard got someone say. More, mm-hmm. You got people more excited that the Vikings beat San Francisco last night than are about what we're talking about. That's where we are. And that's by design. Is there anything in the scriptures that like alludes specifically to that, like how to keep people distracted from the truth that you can think of? Uh, no, not no. alludes to it. But but again, if you read it for what it says, then you just say, well, wait a minute. I, I mean, I just read you the thing with Yahweh, that false flag. Right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just, you know, if you look at uh, when you get into the history that it's divide and conquer. And you have these 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 gods dividing the people up. It's all it's just what the whole thing is about. And so the language the, the language thing, where where is that? Because that, that I heard that once before and then you mentioned it the other day. It's very intriguing to me, like this idea that we all spoke one language and then they purposely In the Tower of Babel, it's in oh. it's in it's in the uh Genesis eleven. Okay. And they, the, 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 there's a mistranslation. They say it's a tower, but in, in Hebrew, it's called a shem, which is a, like a rocket thing that goes up. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and so and, and the, the usual translation is we're trying to build a name for ourselves. No, they're trying to build a rocket ship because if they go up to where the gods are, they can become like the gods. And the gods are saying, no, 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 no. Look, they got technology. We need to mess this up. So they're doing things. If you go and read in the Mayan Popo Vu, there's a story. I can't tell you exact. It's so long. But the the humans, they were genetically modifying them and they were getting very, very intelligent and they were they were getting harder to rule. So what they did was they they had a ship or whatever it was spray a gas, a mist mm. on the population and it dumbed them down. That's in the Popo Vu, okay, of Mesoamerica. But we do that here. Mm. It's got to be, that's the, and when you read it, you see that this is clearly extraterrestrial technology. It's clear. Yeah. Right. There's no other way you can read. Where would they get that from? Right. And even uh, another, on a side note, I, it's something I want to explore because it seems like there's a lot there to, to look at it and be like, okay they're literally saying it is the Vamanas and the Vedas. Have you, have you, and the Vedas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, apparently yeah. they mm-hmm. like, apparently they like give the details of how to build, of how to build them, how they fight like, each other. Is they're that real? Cause I, I haven't, I haven't gone down that yes, rabbit hole yes, yet. That's yes, all legit. Yes, it's very real. That's crazy. It's legit, yeah. That's just crazy. They have no problem talking about it, but remember the Hindus had, don't have a problem with a pantheon of gods. Mm-hmm. Neither do, the Mesopotamian text. They don't mind saying, it's all, what do you mean one God? These are all the people who came to us. It's only Western monotheism that's got to be one. Right. And, and not only does it have to be one, but they have, this is a savior one. Right. And that's what they're going to have to work with and deal with whenever they do this closure around religion. Because you're going to have to say, do the extraterrestrial sin is there a Jesus prototype that goes to every planet and dies for their sins? Uh, a hybrid? Because if your mom is human and your daddy isn't, that means you're not. So they're going to have to wrestle with some stuff. Yeah, and you you made that point. Um, I think I heard it maybe once before, and and you made that point the other day that, uh, which which also kind of makes sense to me, is like this idea of the virgin birth. That that would make sense if it was like an sort of Jesus was veto, like yeah, a vitro, right? and for, yeah, if it in was vitro, yeah, right. yeah, in vitro, you know, why, why not? I mean, I mean, either than that, then it's a good thing to be an angel because everywhere they go, they get pregnant. Uh, uh, an angel visits uh, Sarah; she's pregnant. An angel visits Miriam, Mary; she's pregnant. An angel visits John the Baptist's mom; she's pregnant. An angel visits. Uh, um, Samson's mother, she's pregnant. That's a great job. Wow. It's a good job to have. Everywhere I go, I get somebody pregnant and it's okay. So were they trying to make the parts of the population half? I think they were trying to do upgrades. They were trying to, this, this particular, whoever was doing it was trying to do upgrades because they all have powers. Samson has the strength. Now, we don't know, you know, he was fighting against other people, so maybe he was being used by the Israelite gods. Mm -hmm. Um, But definitely John the Baptist has the gift of gab, and he has this faith. And so, you know, and then Jesus comes along. We're talking in New Testament times. But, um, you know, Daniel, Daniel found favor. I mean, he's in the lion's den. They send somebody to help him out. Remember, Daniel's seeing all these future uh, 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 these things in the future. So they, there's different agendas. Mm-hmm. There's not one agenda. These extraterrestrials, some of them are for us, some of them are not. Mm-hmm. Again, I go back to Hiram Ashad. There's, he says there's a galactic council. Their, their, their credentials are impeccable, and they're telling us. Our governments have been in contact with spacefaring civilizations for decades. Right. Now, you go do the rest. Right. And and uh, we got cut off for a second there, folks, but um, Michael, Reverend Carter, just said that to his knowledge, no, none of, uh, or nobody has followed up with 
What's his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, his Israeli. name is, um, hold on. His name is Brigadier General Hayam Ashed. Yeah, so definitely go look that up. That was 2020, and he came out. And December said, 8th, 2020. For yeah. 27, 28 years, he was Israel's chief of space security. Yeah, I mean, he just came out and said, there's a galactic, there's a galactic federation. Of, yeah. Nobody said anything to discredit him. They didn't Huge say anything. public they, figure. Yeah. They never said anything to discredit Hellier. They never said yeah. anything to discredit them. The Philip Corso book, The Day After Roswell. Yeah. Um, have you read it? Yeah, I've read it and I, okay. when it first came so, out. And I'll probably have to reread it. So you know all that. But that changed it for me because and even, I was somebody who was look searching for truth. You know, I was somebody open-minded, um, whatever. And I, UFOs to me, even the conditioning was effective on someone like me because to me, UFOs was like, I didn't think there was anything real to it. I just thought of like, oh, Twilight Zone, like the 50s, you know, sci-fi. And then I randomly read Corso's book and I was like, wait a second. Like this guy was literally in the Pentagon and he <laughs> literally like Roswell it was this whole thing. And that sent me on this whole train of like, yeah. oh, wait, wait a second. I've been, you know, Truman Show moment. I've been like, this has been real the whole time. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, and the more yes. you get into it, I'm sure, you know, the more you read, the more you corro- corroborate it. It's like, it becomes clear that it's real. Uh, so it's just, it's wild. It's real. Yes. And it is it's real. A, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about is like, we've talked about a lot. Um, I know that there's, I don't know if you watch uh, Michael Sala at all. Yeah, uh, I watch. Well, I, I read some of his books. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I never got into him, but then recently I started reading his books, and I actually thought they were pretty well researched. Um, he has, like, a lot of documents, mm-hmm. and it makes some interesting points. But um, I know that he has a guest on sometimes on his show. Um, her name is Elena Denon. Have you ever heard of her? Mm-hmm. She, oh, I have heard of her. He used he quotes her a lot. She wrote a book or a couple of books about and yeah, because they cross reference each other where he cross references her in some of his books. Yeah. 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 She she so she like she claims that she I guess co- has communicated with people from this Galactic Council Federation mm-hmm. and she claims that, you know, most recently what I what I heard a few months ago or whatever is like she claims that the sort of benevolent uh, faction or coalition or whatever has has kind of finally driven out the majority of the the faction that's trying to like continue to whatever suppress us whatever and that we're going to enter an era where you know there's disclosure um we we enter more of a spiritual kind of awakening it's an interesting idea i'm an optimist just like you so I like to believe that, but I'm just taking somebody's word that they are having these communications. And I don't know, I can't put like all my weight behind it. But what, what do you think about all that? Um, I, I'm very skeptical of channel material Okay. from people. I mean, there's some channel like Seth and Michael. and But these days I'm a little more skeptical because you can't verify it. Um, yeah. she, she's not saying anything different than all these other prophets. It's just so the very prophets vague. said that about the future. Well, that, if you look at John, if you look at the Hopi prophecies, uh-huh. if you look at the prophecies of um, of Hinduism, if you look at the prophecies, she's not saying anything different. They're saying that after a cataclysm, some wars, some great upheaval, that a new world's going to be born. Okay, you're not telling me anything new. I'm just kind of. Um, and and I, I do I I stop listening to channel stuff after Michael and um, I just find now that it's very vague mm. and like I don't have to hear her say it I just told you some prophecies right. and you can look those up on your own so I kind of I take with a grain of salt what people say. I'm channeling this and I'm in touch with them and they're telling me this, then I'll just say, well, if they want me to know it, they'll tell me. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can't. Otherwise, you're just chasing your tail. And you can't corroborate any of that. 
The only reason I'm looking at these prophecies is because they're in every culture. Mm. It's interesting how Hinduism would have the same prophecy as Islam, who would have the same kind. But for the average person on the street, I need a little more for you. From you, especially when you're just she's just repeating what I just told you. Right. Now I'm not saying that she's not who she said she is, but I'm saying I would need a little more. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, I just need a little more. What do you think the pyramids were for? Well, I don't know what they were for, but I know they weren't tombs. Um, and I'm thinking particularly of the Egyptian pyramids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the ones in Chichen Itza and Tulum, you know, you could see the, the equinoxes and the solstices. and um, But uh, I, I have no idea... I, obviously, there's a lot of energy around them, and you could actually wander around inside. Who knows? Maybe they taught workshops and classes there. But uh, but there's also just being in that kind of energy that you could be doing healing there. You could be – I could be in one part of the pyramid, and they could be having classes in another part of the pyramid. So I don't know. I think that's up for grabs. Um, Edgar Casey talked about there's a chamber there for the Sphinx and whatever – but I do know they were not tombs. And, and because of their alignment, um, the, pre- the precision of it, who knows, you could be in a ship and be able to land or be guided by. So it's, 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 it's a technolo- I think they're technological um, structures as well as, um, who knows, maybe you could go there and, and like I said, work on energy, be healed there. Uh, I think I think it's more than what we were taught. But definitely there weren't tombs for pharaohs. Not unless yeah. you I mean you could put a you could put a, a a pharaoh's body in there, but to go through all that, you don't even have enough. Right. <laughs> you don't have enough you don't have enough tombs for as many pharaohs as they had. Yeah. 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 Um I know it's there's so many so many mysteries, interesting parts, and it, and it's all connected. They it's are been, all connected. Um, what I try to remember, Anthony, is this: that there's some things it's okay not to know, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be curious. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is it's like with God. Any God that you can define is not God, but there are mysteries. That's why I like the Lakota when they call the great spirit Wonka Tonkin, the great mystery. Mm -hmm. They are okay living with mystery. In the West, we aren't. We have to have a certainty. We have to know. And it's not possible to know. So I say that because in the quest for knowing, we can be get hung up in the minutia of things and miss the forest for the trees especially with a phenomenon like this. So we started with Plato, right? I know that I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of wisdom. Mm. And that there's some things you may never know, and that's okay. But make sure that you don't get so caught up in the minutia that you miss the bigger picture. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that rings true for me. That's uh... it's easy to do, and especially when people want you to go down a rabbit hole to keep you from learning. You know, like right now, we're so caught up—not you and I—in Donald Trump and all. And you know, these are real things with these wars. They're also distractions in a way, but they're very real. But it can keep you from. Well, wait a minute. When they're giving me all this information. What are they trying to hide from me? Mm. Yeah. Because what Grush and all these folks were saying was probably the biggest news that humankind will hear. And you, and that stopped. Yeah. Do you, did you notice how none of the major media outlets covered Mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it's done. And now we're getting Trump back in and all that stuff. And the Vikings beat them and we got all this. And I'm not saying that's not important, but I'm saying, Because they're thinking while you and I are asleep. So, okay, what's really going on? 
Yeah. There's something going on that you don't want me to hear about Grush anymore. You don't want me to, what's going on? And that's what I'm saying. Cause you'll never know it all. They don't know it all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you make so many good points. Um, we've, we've gone all over the place today. It's been, it's been really nice. Um, but, but we can connect the dots to all of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. See, that's the thing. You know, I hope, I hope it was good for you. Uh, Yo, I, yes. I tried to do my best here. No, um, this was wonderful. This was wonderful. Yeah. One day we'll talk about, one day we'll talk about the, uh, the healing I got from the blonde guy. Yeah, I would, if you were, if you're open to it and you have the availability, I, I'd love to have you back. Um, sure more times and uh especially as things develop we could maybe talk a little more about uh, yeah. events and yes that's what i love like, maybe we uh, can do something next month yeah yeah i was thinking maybe in a month or, or so and yeah, yeah maybe be, next month we can do something before before the uh before the before thanksgiving yeah that would be awesome and and you know what i'm gonna try to do before then is uh read your book uh, your first book okay you know, so I just have a little more maybe understanding of your I work. think you got the basics of it. Yeah, because what I'm talking about now is not in that book. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the depth of it. I, I don't come out and say Yahweh is not. I, I, I allude that he isn't, but I don't say what, what that means for us today because I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about getting out. Hey, guys, these books are talking about extraterrestrial contact. But I think what's more important is, okay, that's great, Michael. I get it. I even believe it. So what? What does that mean for today? Right. And that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about now. Yeah, that's such yeah. a good distinction. Because all these wars are being fought, especially well, all of them, but they're fought on the basis of what Yahweh was talking about and what our ancient ancestors were talking about. Yeah, it's like that's how it's, it's so relevant mm -hmm. still. Yeah, Almost thousands of years old, right? It's, yes, yes. Yeah, you make make so many good points, and and you have a really unique perspective. So I appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you. And people are concerned about the religious aspect. People are afraid now, brother. They're yeah. afraid. Mm -hmm. And and I and 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 you know, like someone, you know, who do I pray to? I don't know who you pray to, uh, because that's what we're talking about here. What does that mean for God or non-God or what does that mean? And so you got to think it through. Most people, we've just been paying, praying and obeying mm -hmm. because that's what the powers of be want you to do. Yeah. You know? And you said something the other day uh, that God is, it's your, you get the privilege to find out what God is for you. What right? that means for you instead of having someone tell you about it. This is what it means. No, that may be, too, well, Jesus comes along and he's giving you another another look at it. Another look at it. It's, 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 it's a little clearer. It's not, you can still, we could still say, okay, that's Jesus. That's your dad. Maybe your dad's extraterrestrial. But is there a God beyond that? And that's where Billy Meyer and the Palladians come in. And they talk about God being creation, that there's God. And then, so we could all go into all that. but. But you're reading and studying and interacting with other people, other sentient beings, and you're working out for yourself. Mm. God is not out there. God is in me. Right. You know, but you're, but you're getting that not because Michael told you or because the Pope told you or because you're getting that because not only did they tell me, but I've experienced it. Right. Yeah, so Michael, they're gonna they're gonna kick us off here in two minutes. So um, I don't I don't want to get uh, you to get cut off. It's been a real pleasure, and we we definitely got part two uh, coming because we definitely, uh, so brother. Let's we, do we, it. We let's yeah. do it. Uh, you just let me know. I, I'll let you know when the new book is coming out. And, yeah, and um, uh, do you have a? Is there like a website or a main place people could go to find? You out can go about? to. Uh, I don't check it as often. MichaelJSCarter dot com. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. So, or you, I have a fan page on Facebook, Reverend Michael J. Carter, and I have another page, uh, Michael J. S. Carter. So you can get my email is Michael J. S. Carter at Gmail. I will respond to anything you send. Um. So those are the ways you can get in touch with me. Awesome. Yeah. So I think a really important 
voice and perspective in all this. So I, you know, hope you keep keep going. I know you will. Let's and, keep the uh, conversation going, brother. Yeah, I look forward and, to and talking. Yeah, to you keep again. being curious and keep open. I hope you have a great rest of the week. You too. You too, Michael. All right, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Take care, brother. Live you long too. and prosper. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <All> right. <laughs> Bye-bye, brother.